So I'm essentially going to start a new series on the channel of me basically just coding basketball games because what I've been doing over the last few months with my spare time is I've just been cutting out basketball games and then using the data that I produce to create reports, you know, video reports, like written reports, just all kinds of reports just to keep the mind active, keep me involved in basketball and sports code and analytics and things like that and just to have a bit of fun with it. So I'm just going to record now like, you know, games that I code, maybe just one quarter at a time, probably less, basically until my laptop's going to explode with how hot it gets. So that's probably going to be the goal and I'll probably just post these once every week or something like that, just of me cutting up games. At the moment it's going to be the Canterbury Rams because they're the team that's playing at the moment that I'm most interested in. And the Canterbury Rams are the semi-professional team of the um, New Zealand League for my hometown of Christchurch, New Zealand. So is the quality going to be NBA level? Uh, no, but it's going to be the level that I'm familiar with, um, teams that I'm familiar with back home in New Zealand. Um, half these games, well, most of these games are televised in New Zealand. I don't think any of them are televised in America. Um, but I'm just going to be cutting them up essentially and we can talk about sports code and basketball and whatnot in the meantime. So I've just set up my code window. I changed the name of the opposition, what quarter it is, and I've selected my lineup based upon who I know is going to be playing, who's on the court, and the years have the ball. We haven't had COVID in New Zealand for about a year now, so that's why you can see a full crowd just like nothing's going on, like it's, you know, 2018. It's a great play there. So we've got everything in that, uh, that instance there. We've got the defense, the pick and roll, the shot type, where it was. Um, man, who passed that ball? That was a good ball. I don't think I'll make that an assist. I think I'll just leave that as it is. But it was definitely in transition. Something I've changed from this version of the code window to a previous version of the code window is I'm now, for drives and post-ups, coding what hand the player shoots with. It's a bit different than just contested and uncontested because by nature all post-ups are going to be contested so I thought I'd change it up. Good transition bucket, bucket there by EJ Singler. I believe he was a star at the University of Oregon before he came to New Zealand and has been playing I think in Australia and New Zealand a lot of his pro career. Catch and shoot three, missed. So if you're familiar with my code windows in the past, I try and essentially code as much information per position as possible, but as also, also as efficiently as possible. So in every single one of these positions, I've essentially got like every you know player on the court for the team I'm coding, um, how fast the position was, like that was a transition position. Um, I've got like the defense run, the shot type, um, the shot location, all that information. So that's a catch and shoot three that's uncontested from the left corner. And then I can essentially filter all of that information um, and output windows or anything like that. So now I can watch every transition catch and shoot three in the left corner, or, you know, just two of those variables. Or if I coded like, you know, another variable, I could watch every catch and shoot three from the left corner while um, Albertson's on the court. You know, I've got a lot of variety essentially with the kind of codes that I do. So that's a post up. You don't see EJ single a post up that much. He, I don't. The problem with the Rams this year is a problem with the Ohio State that I, you know, coded all of their last season is that they don't have anyone who's a really good traditional five. They used to. They had Jack Salt, who, if you're familiar, was on those Virginia teams that won the national title and you know got beaten by UMBC a few years ago. They have him on the team. However. Um, He's been injured recently, so they don't have him, and without him, they don't really have a traditional five on the floor. They essentially have a bunch of fours. So they do get bent up a lot on drives. They get blocked a lot at the rim um, on offense. They just don't have a lot of great chances around the rim, so they do result to a lot of three-point shooting like this. I want to say that's uncontested. There is a bit of subjectivity when it comes to contested and uncontested shots, obviously. Not a huge fan of that shot if I was on the Taranaki ears. <coughs> I 
So if I was going to use this code window, um, if I was actually with a team, I would probably use this code window in real time. I'll just catch up during the timeouts, which is a lot easier during college basketball. That's what I did for the uh, Ohio State. You would code, we used a very code window very similar to this and would be coding in real time somewhere behind the game and just during the timeouts you would catch up. So by the time the game was finished, you would have coded the whole game. God, that was an awful shot. Um, I don't even know what to say that was. So in transition, I'm just going to say that's a miss to off the dribble contested. I'm going to say that was in the paint. Don't really know what that shot, how to classify that shot. Don't know how what really happened there. Oh, he fell over himself. Turnover. Made two. Breakaway uncontested. I'll also label that as a fast break. The problem with uh, these games instead of college games is that there's no real like there's timeouts, but then I was um, then I was there's no like you know four minute wars. There's no like consistent media timeouts that I'm used to. So they are a bit more high pace. Something else that I've added to this version of the code window is I've added who assists a shot. So if we just go to that last shot there, I put my offense and my defense at the top. I go here. You can see that like we've got the shot assist. So we can see that singular assisted that shot. So like the whole instance now, we've got like defense, the players on the court. Um, we've got the position start, the assist, who'd made the assist, the shot location, the shot player, the shot quality, the shot result, and the shot type, and the time of game it occurred. So that's a lot of information. And you can filter any one of these labels by another label. So that's what's really awesome about this code window. I'm slightly biased because I made it, obviously, but that's what I enjoy about it, at least. Steal turnover. Great play there. Assist. Who made that hoop? Who got that in eventually at the bottom? Oh, singlet. Singler, in my opinion, is the best player on the Rams. He's the most well-rounded player when it comes to defense, when it comes to rebounding, assists. Don't know what happened there. I'm going to say that was a press. Oh, I think there might have been a substitute there. Yep. Who came off? It's like Talma came off for... I don't know who that is quite yet. Oh, I know who it is. It's Whitaker. So I just made a sub. So looking at the score down here, I was like, why is it just 9-3? to three? But I think they've obviously made an error. They forgot the one. So I'm not going to freak out quite yet about the score being wrong. That happens all the time in these New Zealand broadcasts. For some reason, they can't help but get the score wrong. Pick and roll. This time it didn't work. Good steal by Singler. Now we're on the fast break. No, nope, gonna go back. Man position. Oh, long three. Oh, nailed it. At least at the time of coding this, I know it's a bit of an older game. It happened about six days ago, so I know who wins. So this is the press. Man. I'm going to say that's an uncontested shot, even though he had a... I'm going to say it's contested. A lot going on there. And the Rams get the defensive rebound. So I'm just going to... Since there's a team defensive rebound, I'm going to just put it and do the team general. Don't think there's any more subs made. Now at home games, the Rams actually have someone coding the games like essentially right next to the bench for them. They have a couple of university students um, code the games in sports code and you know output live stats that the coaches care about, like deflections and whatnot. Um, but on away games, well, this is not like a professional league right here, so they don't have that quite yet, but um, they do have that, which is quite cool. I think that's really cool. I did that when I was in Christchurch for a couple of years. I'd code all the Rams games um, at the arena, but I would be doing it behind one of the stands, and it would be purely for like post-game stuff. I we tried once doing live game stuff, but 
it was a bit of a trial and it didn't work out how I wanted it, so I don't think we went back to it. Good stuff there. I'm going to say it's a hook shot. Transition, foul, my laptop hasn't decided to explode yet but it's ramping up the heat, I see the Rams have made another substitution, I'm going to see if they made it in the position before, no they had not, Hamilton's going off for Smith, I've already drained like a bunch of battery just doing this so we can't go that much longer, I'm only at 19%. See, this is, this is another instance, so there's another feature of the window. We've got a pick and roll here by the Rams. We've got Taylor as the ball handler and Bailey as the screener. So when I do a pick and roll for the opposition, it's just a label where it says pick and roll. It's in the middle of my play section. However, for the, um, the Rams, when the team I'm coding does a pick and roll, there's actually a little bit more involved. So we have a screen, and we've got a pick and roll now. At any point during this position, because these are labels, I can do this, but I'm just going to do it now because it's at the time of the pick and roll. I press pick and roll, it's a toggle button, and I pick who's the ball handler, as you can see there with the label group down the bottom, and then I pick who's rolling. So I'm going to go Bailey. And what that means essentially is now I've got that label information listed. So now I can, now if I wanted to, I could watch every pick and roll that ends in a catch and shoot three, or every pick and roll that ends in like a shot from the left wing, or every pick and roll that involves one of those two players. Like I've got all this detail now that I can filter by just purely for pick and rolls because obviously that's a very important aspect of a modern basketball. So we've got a steal here, don't know what's going to happen here. They said it's a foul. That's the thing that's annoying about watching these games with the volume off, you sometimes have absolutely no idea what's going on. I'm not going to count that as a position, I'm just going to say they fouled. If you've also seen one of my timelines before, it's a lot usually a lot cleaner than this. I usually uh, clean it up and put everything in order, but obviously when you're coding it live, that's not how it looks. And we've got a timeout. Some beautiful crowd shots. Hopefully this video doesn't get flagged for copyright or something like that. Who knows? So if I was the opposition against the Rams, I'd essentially just run zone all the time because they have no real big man, and also the Rams aren't well known for being great shooters, so I have absolutely no idea what Taylor was doing there. So we've got a fast break, lays it in, break away. Possibly the hardest part of this window was figuring out what play types or shot types I mean to have, because you've got to have enough shot types um, that uh, kind of make sense, but you also don't want too many shot types that you kind of almost dilute the data. Oh, is this going to be a foul on the ears? Yep. That was actually a great, great pass and a great cut by our man there. So we might actually be able to see some free throws. Free throws, in my opinion, are the most annoying thing with basketball code windows. They kind of ruin everything because they make it very, very awkward. And how to label free throws becomes very difficult. So the free throws of my code window actually took the longest time to kind of develop and put in the code window. Because obviously you want free throws for the player, the individual player, and attribute them to the individual player. But you also want to attribute them to the team. You also ideally want to attribute them to the previous position because... You want to be able to say like these these are the position these are the free throw results from like you know that last position like what happens so I don't know why my free throws look like that suddenly that's weird why did the miss threes not go away either way we've made a substitution so I'm not going to code this position quite yet until I know who's come on it's like Bailey's gone off for Talma. Obviously, you've got to know the team that you're coding. You'll also notice that, like down here, I've got like some basic stats. I've got three-point shooting percentage, and I've also got turnovers. So, 
those are basically just stats that I find interesting while I'm watching the game because I might be curious about what the three point percentage is or the turnovers. So I've just kind of got them there. You could have obviously you could have whatever stats you wanted there. You could have two point percentages or field goal percentage. That's a great block right there, right? While I'm burbling on. But I've just picked those two stats just because I'm particularly interested in those two. And Whitaker there just had one hell of a two play position. He did he got the rebound, then flies down the other end of the court, assists, and it sets up our man Talma. That's my battery at 13%. See if we can make it to the end of the quarter. More free throws. You don't have to do them live, you just have to do them at some point because they're just labels, so they're just going into the last position. Both of them. So now those labels are attributed to the last position. So now if I wanted to watch like every transition position, every transition position, those are two words that I can't put together, that ends in a that ends in free throws, I can do that now. So I've just noticed that, uh, why am I so close on my time? I've just noticed that the Rams have subbed someone else in. They just subbed the player, took the free throws in, uh, out. So take them out, go back to the start of the position. Away we go again. I'm gonna say that was a press because it looks like the Rams are following them down. I was about to say, that must have been a foul, because that's a terrible shot otherwise. I think I was on Talma. I'm not too concerned about fouls. Fouls is one of those things that I don't really code with much accuracy. I kind of just code whoever, because I don't think that's not exactly the first thing you look at on a box score. Obviously, it's very important when you're coaching a game for the coach to know who's got how many fouls, but if you're coding the game, I don't really care too much. When you get to the end of the season, or especially once you get after a game, you're not going to be going back and like watching a player's fouls with much intent. I mean, maybe, but that's not what I'm looking at. Great little pick and pop here. You could do my little, you could do my little pick and roll label um, thing here for pick and pops if you wanted. I don't. I'm just doing it exclusively for pick and rolls. I've thought about not making it called pick and roll. I've thought about just making it pick and pick and play or something like that to make it more general so you can include all the different like pick and pop, pick and slip, pick and roll plays but I've just kept it at pick and roll for now. Speaking of which, here come the ears with the pick and roll and they've got a roll man contested, he kind of shot that from the paint, they're counting a foul, he fouled. I'm going to say that was Whitaker, again I'm not going to be that concerned about it. Opposition free throws for me work differently than home team free throws. It's just it is just attributed to the team. Obviously, I don't care what player does them. Um, you'll see that just the defensive rebounds show up here. So when I click one of those, I'll turn that toggle button off, and away we go. And both that defensive rebound and the free throw will go to the last position. Even though there obviously wasn't a defensive rebound from that position, it was just the you know the. Uh, um, because it ended in a foul, I just kind of do that anyway, because there's nowhere else to put that defensive rebound label. I mean, what a pass by Whitaker. Man, Whitaker's on. This is the best Whitaker I've ever seen play at the moment. Singler gets the easy, uh, easy cut bucket. This is kind of what I'm talking about with size, though, with the Rams. I mean, this player here, this point guard number nine, Hannon, He's a little guy. He's very talented for his uh, for what he is, but he's a bit small, so he runs into problems when he's playing against teams that are a bit bigger than him. I mean, if I was the uh, 
if I was the ears, I'd kind of just put him in like pick and roll actions, or even because even just the opposition guard is going to be bigger than than Hannon. Oh, they're taking Singler out, are they? They are taking Singler out. This guy's got a mop of hair, I'll tell you what. Brown. He's got a hell of a mop of hair. So I line out of bounds. Don't know if I'll make it all the way through this, <laughs> this quarter with my battery, to be honest. Doesn't look like I will. That was a bit of a... That wasn't a post-up, it was more of a drive, but I'm going to make it a post-up because he did back down for a little bit there. Oh! What happened there? So, that looks like a block. This is another shot type that I added to the window recently, I just call it dump off. It's not so much a cut, but when a player is just in the dunking position, and he's kind of just standing there and receives the ball, I call that a, a dump off. So dump offs are almost well, by definition, dump offs are occurring in the uh, in the rim uh, at the rim area. So so that's a fast break. Did you see that was a lefty? He did. So that's where I can go left. Now the left and right like hand things, they're not so much important on a single game to game basis because most players, at least on a game to game basis, 9 out of 10 times are going to shoot with their dominant hand. But when it comes to the end of the season, I think it's important because essentially at the end of a season or any sort of sample size of games, a coach might want to go like, I want to watch all of this player's drives with his off hand or something like that. So that's kind of like a tool to do so, where if I want to watch all of Smith's left-handed drives, even if he's a right-hander, I mean, that's accessible to me. Um, who's coming off here for Bailey? Is someone coming off? Whitaker's coming off. So we've got Talma at the four, Bailey at the five. Here comes Hannon. He's a bit too short for that, to go at that guy at the rim, so he went off, as I would. Talmer in the post, passes off to Brown. Good ball movement here. I swear to God, if Bailey did what... It... That's the Bailey special there. Um, the amount of times Bailey gets the ball on the corner and then just steps out of bounds is unbelievable. He must have done that three times in the last game. Floater. Not a huge fan of the floater. Doesn't always seem to work out. You got that rebound, Talma. You hate to see that, the old dribble off the foot. And off we go on the fast break. That's an easy one. Obviously, a window like this takes practice. Like to me, it's almost like playing the piano because I've done it so many times. So it's something I'm very familiar with. Um, but obviously, if you ever were to use this window for the first time, it might take some getting used to. We've got 30 seconds left. Can I make it to the end of the uh, end of the quarter before my battery runs out and my laptop explodes? Oh no! Oh no! I'm probably I'm I'm scared that the uh, the the my, there's going to be some lagging to my coding, which won't be good for the shots. Is that a block? That was a block. I'm going to say that was a drive. Yeah, my scripting is getting very slow now because of the battery. You know, I'm just going to sign it off there. So, 23 seconds to go in the first quarter. This probably will be the only part of this game that I code. That will make it to the YouTube channel. Spoilers: the Rams win quite comfortably. Um, one of the, only, they don't win many games, but this one they do win. So excited to see that. But thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the code window or sports code, my email is in the description below. Same with the link if you ever wanted to buy this uh, window pack. Um, there's an output window that goes along with it. Um, you can see the channel if you want to see that in action. There's also a link down there to my blog where I uh, have uploaded a bunch of kind of like written versions of games that I coded last year for a bunch of t college teams in the US. So if you're ever interested in seeing that sort of stuff for sports, uh, nerdy sports code people, go there and check it out. Thank you very much.